Uh, greetings, and welcome to the uh, 72nd episode of Immortal Modding Showcases. And as always, I'm your host, Dark Elf Guy. And today, we'll be taking a look at another uh, 13 uh, randomly themed mods for reviewing pleasure. And yes, I did say random. I know that uh, historically, uh, we've always done uh, specific themes for even numbered episodes like this, but uh, you know, the fact of the matter is, we're running a bit low on uh, themed mods to showcase. Oh, sure, we'll always have plenty of uh, themed uh, house mods and gameplay mods and so on and so forth. But we just don't have enough for the landmass, town, dungeon, and a couple of the just uh, small categories. So we'll just be doing a random themed episodes from now on, unless someone has a particular theme, you know, a suggestion they have in mind. Uh, either way, there's a ton of great mods in today's episode. So as always, you know, down the links and timestamp annotations are down below. So let's go ahead and get started, but you know, real quick, before we do, there is a couple of things I wanted to mention. Uh, the first of which is that we do have a Patreon page. And I know, I know, that's a little, you know, self-serving to, you know, mention here, but... Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that I usually, you know, forget to uh, promote our Patreon page, which we've had since 2016. I think this is only the fifth or possibly sixth time I've actually mentioned it in a video. So, you know, it's something I tend to forget about. And the fact of the matter is, is that due to, you know, recent complications with one of our computers dying, uh, well, we could use a little bit of help, so uh, if you have a dollar to spare, you know, just chip in a dollar a month, and, you know, that really helps out the channel a lot. And I promise we're not going to become one of those YouTube channels that just, you know, promotes their Patreon page all the time. That would be, you know, really annoying. Uh, this is just one of the few occasions that, you know, it's kind of justified. And anyway, you'll find a link to that uh, down below, and... You know, any help is greatly appreciated. And the second thing I was going to, you know, mention here is that we are using a new pop filter in uh, for recording uh, the audio in today's video. And to be honest, this pop filter is a bit strange. It actually attaches directly to the mic. Uh, so I don't know how that's going to, you know, affect audio quality. Hopefully it makes it better and not worse. But anyway, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with our popular model of the week this week, which uh, this week is a weapon sheath in by Greatness 7. And even though this is a rather recent release, I don't think this mod really needs so much of an introduction here. After being released back in uh, early October, Weapon Sheathing has already earned uh, nearly 200 endorsements and is quickly becoming one of the most popular mods of 2018, which is of course, you know, why we're showcasing it as our popular mod of the week this week. But uh, for those of you who have somehow missed out on what this, you know, mod does, uh, well, basically adds, you know, Weapon Sheathing for all the weapons in the game, including, uh, you know, support for uh, other mods, so uh, weapons will now be visible at your hip or uh, on your back uh, when you have them equipped, instead of, you know, just uh, pointing weapons uh, magically out of nowhere. And uh, most of the vanilla game weapons now have uh, custom sheaths, uh, such as uh, silver daggers, ebony longswords, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, also, uh, bows will now appear on your back, and if you have some arrows equipped, uh, you'll also see a quiver, you know, on your character as well. And weapons will automatically appear on your character when you equip them, thanks to the magic that is the MWC Nightly Build. And this will also work for, you know, uh, modded weapons added to the game. Though they might not have the uh, custom sheaths that, uh, you know, vanilla weapons come with. And just taking a quick look at the uh, mod control panel in the uh, main menu here, uh, you can see that uh, weapon sheathing comes with a number of features, including the ability to uh, turn on shields, so that uh, shields will appear on your character's back, or, you know, turning on or off weapon sheathing, or, and this is a really cool advanced feature here, uh, you can set to which mods you have in your save game use weapon sheathing. So if there's a mod that, you know, might conflict with uh, weapon sheathing, you can just uh, filter it out through the, uh, you know, the uh, mod control panel. Uh, easy peasy. Uh, you can even do this for individual weapons, as there's an option here to uh, filter out any specific weapon in the game, including uh, new weapons uh, from mods. So theoretically, if you have a modded weapon that doesn't really work well, you know, weapon sheath, so you can just filter it out. Or if you don't, you know, like how, for example, a spear show up on your uh, character's back, you can just, you know, filter that out too. Uh, there's a lot of customization here, and thanks to the advanced features of NDOC, it's all really pretty easy to uh, change quickly and efficiently without ever having to, you know, close out and uh, restart the game. And of course, uh, this also works for all the uh, NPCs in the game as well. Uh, so when you're just, you know, walking down the street, or uh, raiding a bandit slayer, or just uh, what have you, everyone who has a weapon will have that weapon, you know, visible on them. Uh, which is just a really nice, you know, little addition to the game here. Uh, especially since, you know, Morrowind is the only uh, modern Elder Scrolls game that didn't have this feature before. Uh, there's even some, uh, you know, uh, new weapon drawing animations to uh, better fit, uh, you know, the weapon she's here. Though this is an optional addition to everything else included here. 
And an event that's just a lot to like here this mod. And if you haven't checked it out yet, you absolutely should. It really helps to just enhance the feel of the game. But uh, moving on, for House Mod Week this week, we have one more storage home by A1XMG94. And now, as the name here would imply, this mod adds a new player home to the Market District in Balmora. Uh, right along the uh, southern wall of the city here, with a, a bit of a perch that gives a good view over the city streets and plazas of this capital, Great House of Lalu. Oh, uh, you note, there's some even, you know, rooftop dining to uh, take in the view with. But heading on inside, you'll find a rather small and uh, compact home to call your own. Uh, complete with lots and lots of storage. Again, just like you would expect, you know, given uh, the mod name here. Uh, this includes a dozen of chests, a bed for you to use, a personal merchant, who can also repair your gear, and also a, a note of uh, introduction from the uh, mod author. And in addition to all that, uh, you also find a small, albeit uh, optional basement, which includes a number of, of uh, cheat objects for just earning gold, increasing player speed, teleporting around Morrowind, uh, lockpicks, books, and uh, much more. Uh, again though, this is optional. I think there's actually a version of this mod without cheats, if you'd rather, you know, play with that. But all in all, this is rather, you know, simple, but uh, functional little home to call your own. And anyway, moving on, uh, this week's uh, Gameplay Mall of the Week is Ingredient Flavor Text by Ramiros. And this is one of really uh, several tooltip and uh, flavor text mods that have been released over the past few months taking advantage of some of the uh, new features of the MWC Nightly Build. And in this particular case, uh, this mod adds uh, flavor text or, you know, descriptions to pretty much all the ingredients in the game. And now, when you uh, look at, uh, you know, an ingredient, like, say, uh, bread, or conberry, or rat meat, or just uh, what have you, either just out in the uh, game world somewhere, or uh, in your inventory, uh, you'll see a bit of, you know, flavor text telling you what that ingredient is. And uh, for the most part, these are brief and straightforward descriptions that provide a little bit of lore, or perhaps, you know, common knowledge about each ingredient. But either way, this is just a really cool feature, and, you know, helps add a bit more uh, substance to the game. And of course, because this is a MWC Nightly Build mod, uh, there's no actual .esp here. This is all just handled automatically by Lewis scripts in the background. Uh, so this mod is compatible with pretty much everything except, you know, OpenMW. And anyway, we're just going to uh, take a look at a, a couple of these ingredients here, flavor text, which, uh, by the way, also covers all the booze-related drinks in the game, like Sujama and Grief and, uh, you know, all that stuff. And again, this is just a, a really cool feature here that uh, previously, you know, wasn't possible with the uh, Morrowind game engine. And uh, we'll doubtless see more and more mods, you know, take advantage of this feature in the future. And next up, we have our uh, Town Mod of the Week, and uh, this week we have Cedanine Tree Removal by Uncle Boss. And, well, this mod basically does two things, the first of which is pretty much in the mod title. It uh, removes all the trees from around Cedanine, including parts of the uh, surrounding Bitter Coast region, uh, which I'll admit is an odd design direction, but it kind of works. The uh, lack of trees here makes this uh, swampy village feel a little more uh, just open. Although you will still notice a few trees in the background that might just, you know, pop out as we get closer. And I'm really not sure why that's happening. Uh, for whatever reason, a rerunning a distant land didn't remove all the trees like it should have. But anyway, the uh, second part of this mod is an expansion to the uh, city of Sydney, of a new expanded area shacks along the uh, western part of town. There's about half a dozen uh, new shacks here, making for a fairly sizable town expansion. And there's also a couple of, uh, you know, small docks here, and a uh, guar farm adding a bit more life to this uh, small fishing village by the sea. And one other thing to note here, just a real quick, is that this mod uh, does come with support for a Verts Ground Cover mod, uh, so you can actually use this with animated grass if you want to. And now just uh, taking a quick look at uh, some of the interiors here. Uh, most of these new shacks are, uh, yeah, you know, residential nature. There's not really a whole lot of uh, new shops here, though there is, you know, something akin to a tavern. And really, all these interiors are uh, pretty nicely detailed, with a good sense of atmosphere. And really, while the, you know, basic premise of removing trees might be a little odd, this is probably one of the best town expansions available for, uh, you know, Cedanine, at least as far as quality content is concerned. And it's definitely worth checking out just for that. And uh, for our items for the week this week, we're uh, checking out Tower Claw Tooltips by PhD and Sorcery. And yes, this is actually another uh, flavor text mod like the uh, one we just showcased. And uh, yes, that means it does require the latest MWC nightly build. And I know, I know, it seems like we're covering a lot of uh, MWC mods today. But, you know, we have a pretty major backlog of both gameplay and MWC mods that we need to cover here from the nearly uh, three months that we went without a core episode of Mario Online Showcases. But anyway, uh, focusing uh, specifically on this mod, and what this does is add the uh, descriptions of each of the various artifacts of Tamriel to each item in-game. 
And this uh, flavor text here is actually taken from the, uh, you know, the uh, book, The uh, Famed Artifacts of Tamriel, a, a copy of which you can find in the uh, Mornhold Museum. Now, when you uh, find one of these artifacts, you can uh, read the uh, lore about it by just, you know, hovering your uh, mouse over the uh, artifact icon. And much like with ingredient flavor text, uh, this works both in your inventory and out in the uh, game world. And because this is, again, a MWC Nightly Build mod that uses, uh, you know, Lua scripting, uh, there's no actual .esp, so this will, you know, just automatically work with just about everything, and shouldn't conflict with, you know, any other mods, except, of course, you know, OpenMW. And in the event, uh, this is just another, uh, you know, really cool addition here. And while we do have uh, several other uh, tooltip and flavor text mods to a showcase in the future, I promise this is probably going to be, uh, you know, one of the uh, last ones for this particular episode. And anyway, uh, this week's uh, quest of the week is the uh, Scrolls of the Nine Barriers by Michael Dog. And now I have a slight confession to make here. While this mod does add a new quest involving the uh, Scrolls of the Nine Barriers, it isn't necessarily the main feature here, as, you know, we'll see in a minute. Uh, first and foremost, this one makes the failed scroll of the Ninth Barrier extremely rare. And as you can see here, in order to uh, get one of these scrolls, uh, you'll now have to do a quest for a mage researching the enchantment of the Nine Barriers, including some uh, new lore on the topic. Uh, you know, just explaining what uh, each of the barriers does. And mostly this quest involves finding the uh, first seven barriers. Now, which brings us to another uh, new addition of this mod, which adds the uh, scrolls of the 7th and 8th uh, barrier to the uh, leveled list. So you'll now actually find them out in the, you know, actual game world. And the quest itself is really fairly short, uh, so we won't be spending too much time with it here. But another thing to point out here is that this uh, mod also adds a unique icon for the scrolls of the 9th barrier, as well as a flavor text for those of you, uh, you know, using the MWC not only build. Which, you know, gives a bit of a uh, description about uh, what, you know, each of these scrolls does. Uh, there's also a new and a unique model for the uh, Scroll of the Ninth Barrier. And all the enchantments uh, for these scrolls have been made to match the power level of their uh, spell counterparts. As, uh, you know, before, uh, the magic spells were just a bit more powerful than the scrolls themselves. Uh, there's also some, you know, other rebalancing with regards to prices, identifying scrolls if you're uh, using NWC, and a few other features, and all in all, while this isn't exactly a big quest mod, it does add a fair bit of lore and, you know, features to one of the more, uh, I would say, common types of enchanted scrolls in the game. And uh, next up, we have our uh, Landmaster of the Week, which uh, this week is Indib Treehouse Beta by Eric Henry, aka Brillo. Alright, so a uh, slight confession here, we've uh, technically already featured this mod before as a part of the pilot episode of Modern Modding History about two years ago. And when I say technically, I mean that this mod was actually a demo for the larger Indib project. And as such, is included as part of the full Indib mod. Now, just doing a quick history lesson here, when Eric Henry was working on the Indib project, uh, circa around 2003, uh, this Treehouse Landmass was the first demo released of what would eventually become Indib's Twilight, a mod that was never actually released in a finished state, but uh, the resources from it would appear in dozens of mods since, including Oblivion mods, a few of which we've even showcased for Oblivion modding showcases. And while uh, Indib's uh, Twilight was never actually, you know, finished, uh, this Treehouse is actually included with it already. So, you know, fair warning, if you're using the uh, beta release of Indib's Twilight and, you know, this together, it uh, might cause a few issues, but anyway, with all that out of the way, and let's get on with the actual showcase here. And as you might guess, you know, from the name here, uh, this mod adds an island with a treehouse to the seas of Morrowind, a complete with a scenic little forest, including beaches, cliff faces, and uh, small inland ponds. You know, all rather nice looking, if perhaps a bit dated in the texture and, you know, just a model work department. I remember, this was all from, you know, 2003, so at the time, it was pretty great looking, but uh, now though, the Indib uh, tree models are perhaps, you know, showing their age. And naturally, the only building here is a, a small tree house. Then there's also some, you know, scenic little getaways in about the island, with a hammock here, a little dock there, and just some amazing little vistas just all over the place. And even with, you know, modern graphics, I still think this is a rather beautiful island in a way. And it's certainly a great, you know, place for a house mod. And real quick though, let's just take a look at the uh, world map here. And uh, you can see this uh, new landmass here. It's a bit large for a small house. And you'll note it will conflict with a tower built. But it's also, you know, not that far away, relatively speaking, from a Vardenfell. But just uh, moving on, let's take a look at the uh, treehouse here. And the interior is a little basic. You know, just uh, some shelf space, a few containers, and a hammock. And that's really just about it. 
But in the event, uh, despite the small age, it's uh, still worth taking a look at today, either as a standalone house mod, or perhaps, you know, as part of the larger, though very much unfinished, project of Indib's Twilight. For NPC mod leak this week, we have Django Starlog by Von Django's. And yes, I know that, uh, strictly speaking, this isn't exactly an NPC mod, but, uh, you know, a dialogue is pretty close, all things are considered here. And this mod, in particular, is considered a popular classic in the uh, community, and one that uh, we've uh, sadly, you know, neglected to a uh, showcase before now. And this is quite possibly one of, if not the most popular mod by famed quest martyr and novelist, Avon Django's, uh, who you may remember, uh, he also wrote and published a fantasy book, A Black Feather, which we did a review on just about a year ago. And uh, speaking of, I really just highly recommend, you know, checking out his book. A link to it on Amazon, of which you can find down below. But anyway, uh, back to the uh, mod here. And uh, what this mod does is add about uh, 400 to 500 uh, new responses to various generic dialogue topics, like, you know, little secret, uh, background, services, and others. Uh, to just provide a bit more variety to the uh, dialogue you get when you talk to NPCs. And a lot of this is faction, location, and of course, a race specific. So, you know, different races and different places will have different responses to uh, some of these dialogue topics. And uh, now, because these uh, dialogue responses are added to the uh, sometimes randomized responses you get with modern NPCs, it's a little difficult to, you know, showcase the actual new content added by this mod. So suffice to say, you will see some uh, vanilla dialogue mix in here. But either way, this is a pretty massive boon to the uh, dialogue of Morrowind, and, you know, helps add a bit more just uh, personality and individuality to various generic dialogue topics in the game. Now uh, this is, in a number of modding circles, considered to be a must-have mod, and there's a reason for that, and I would certainly, you know, recommend checking it out. But anyway, this week's new meshes and textures mod of the week is Asthesia, a uh, Hololu Textures by Wright Teller. And now, this is one of the newest texture replaces for the Hololu architecture set, a uh, release early in 2018, and it's certainly already, you know, one of the best looking Hololu replaces from a visual perspective, uh, keeping an obviously you no know, vanilla and lore friendly style, while at the uh, same time offering wholly uh, new and handcrafted textures instead of the, uh, you know, uh, usual upscaled variety found in a number of replacer mods out there. Uh, these uh, textures are also obviously of a fairly high resolution, at least you know, when compared to a vanilla Morrowind, uh, coming in 2K as well as 1K resolution, uh, depending on uh, just what you want. Uh, they also uh, cover pretty much the entire Hololo architecture set, as you can see here for Mora, including uh, not just the buildings, but also the windows and doors with new places. And as we'll see here in a minute, uh, this also obviously includes the interior side of things as well, uh, which we'll be doing a short tour of in a moment. But anyway, this is probably the most popular, uh, you know, new Hololu Texture Replacer mod we released in 2018. And uh, for good reason, it's a very scenic and beautiful replacer set, including uh, not just, uh, you know, support for 1K and 2K resolution, but also including some model replacers as well for, you know, all the buildings, uh, courtesy of Remiros and Project Atlas, uh, which should, in addition to looking great, improve performance when in cities like Balmora and Saran. Now, of course, everyone has a different uh, personal preference when it comes to uh, texture mods, but I would say, as far as lore-friendly and vanilla art style texture replacers go, uh, this is probably one of the best ones on the market for the Hololu, uh, right up there with Tidy's Architect Horror replacers. Though, having said that, it'll be uh, completely up to your own personal judgement to, uh, you know, decide here which is better. I'm just the uh, showcaser after all. And in any event, uh, this is a great looking mod and a great improvement on the Hololu, and I would, you know, highly recommend uh, checking it out. And next up, we have our uh, Mars Resource Mod Week, which uh, this week is a Dark Knight's Apocrypha Asset by Dark Knight. Now, uh, this is obviously a, a resource pack, uh, the Apocrypha resources that uh, Dark Knight created for Team Sexy Slode's uh, second mod entry for this year's Modern Modding Madness, uh, you know, modding competition, the uh, Demon of Knowledge. And depending on when this video airs, this is probably the fourth, or even possibly the fifth time that you've seen video footage of the uh, Demon of Knowledge on our YouTube channel. And this is due to the, uh, dare I say, ingenious and clever reusage of the exact same footage for uh, multiple different mods and videos, uh, which really I just got to hand it to myself of how often I've managed to get away with this. I mean, it's really crazy if you think about it. But anyway, uh, this uh, resource package includes such, uh, uh, you know, oddities as creepy uh, tentacle lights, uh, giant stacks of books, uh, paper uh, tornadoes, and of course the Apocrypha tile set. Uh, some of these items are animated, I believe, and all of them are available to be used in your own mods. 
which, you know, could be uh, potentially quite useful if you're looking to make a mod based on Hermaeus Mora or the Realm of Apocrypha. Uh, either way, they're certainly worth taking a look at, and uh, by the way, you know, don't forget to uh, play the uh, Demon of Knowledge. It really can't be said enough, it's a, a great mod. Uh, for our underrated mod of the week this week, we have a Dreadful Cavin by Lady Eternity, and updated and fixed by JSP25. And now, this is actually an older mod, as, you know, it should be obvious by the original mod author. Uh, Lady Eternity hasn't been active in the community for well over a decade now. But this mod has recently been picked up, uh, cleaned, and fixed of any real major issues by JSP25, uh, perhaps, you know, best known for his Dungeon Overhaul and Expansion series of mods. And in any event, uh, this is a, uh, you know, small dungeon mod that adds a new cavern complex near the bridge to Wolverine Hall and of Mora. And while Dreadful Cavern is uh, clearly an older mod, with some older design elements, uh, typical mods in the early 2000s, it has an excellent sense of uh, just atmosphere and lighting, uh, providing some uh, dynamic chambers to a fight through. And uh, speaking of, you'll be facing a variety of creatures in here, from uh, simple rats and other hostile wildlife to uh, skeletons and the undead. Though this is by no means a challenging dungeon, and I'd imagine even low level characters should be able to uh, play through this with relative ease. Uh, that said, this is a really quite interesting and unique looking dungeon with lots of uh, flora and a fair a number of opponents to face and some loot to find. And all in all, a, a decent dungeon, and it's uh, certainly worth taking a look at if you're looking for, you know, just another dungeon to uh, play through. Uh, this week's uh, Blast from the Past mod of the week is a Cell House by Mike Tree 4. And now, this is obviously a house mod, but uh, one of uh, more than a few surprises, as we'll see here in a moment. But uh, first, uh, this mod adds a new shack and docks the outskirts of Cedanine in the Abitacoast region. And there really isn't uh, too much to, you know, look at here from the outside, and going into the actual shack here, uh, you'll find an equally just unimpressive interior to match the exterior, along with a note from the uh, previous person to uh, discover this home. But all this is just the entrance to really something much greater. And uh, should you uh, venture underneath the shack, uh, you'll find a truly charming and a beautiful abode to call your own. Uh, this uh, cell house consists of a number of floors and rooms, uh, the office of which here includes a bedroom, a dining area, alchemical garden, and a really just uh, lovely usage of IV and atmospheric lighting to make a really cozy and beautiful home. But uh, moving on, uh, downstairs you'll find another bedroom, again with just tons of IV to add to the uh, rather unique character of this abode. And there's also a study area here, as well as a small chemical lab with, uh, you know, a chemical equipment for you to use if you so desire. And now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I really just love the feel and atmosphere of this home. It's uh, breathtakingly beautiful and cozy, and extremely just uh, well furnished, including a larger, uh, you know, dining area for a kitchen-like bar, a dining room table, and additional tables and chairs for a large gathering of your just companions and friends. Uh, this isn't everything, though. In addition to the living areas of the house, uh, there's also a fairly large uh, sub-basement, uh, where you'll find uh, tons of storage and display space, with uh, numerous containers to uh, throw your stuff into, including chests, uh, crates, and barrels, as well as a number of shelves, tables, and counters for you to uh, display items on if you want. Uh, there's even a library, which in addition to being quite cozy, also includes nearly every book in the game. Though this uh, might be considered a bit, you know, cheaty by some, in any event, uh, there's a, a few rows of uh, book stacks here, as well as a, a number of tables where you can take books to, you know, read and study, if you so desire. And uh, now the uh, last room we're going to be taking a look at here is a massive display hall. Again, just uh, beautifully decorated with ivy and a great uh, atmospheric use of lighting, where you'll find a, a number of display stands to uh, show off your loot on. And this room is really quite massive too, uh, stretching even beyond what our distant land settings can show here. And to say the least, this is a beautiful and amazing looking house mod, which while looking, you know, simple on the surface, offers a fairly sizable bow to call your own. Uh, finally, our uh, bonus mod of the week this week is Anissa's Docks by Gavrilo93 and Poodle Sandwich. And this is basically an immersion and detail mod that fixes perhaps one of the most glaring omissions from the Imperial Legion quest line. Uh, most of you will uh, doubtless remember that the uh, first quest that you do for the Imperial Legion involves uh, getting a land deed from a widow, apparently for the purpose of building the new set docks. But these docks never actually, you know, show up in game, and that little detail is just completely ignored uh, throughout the entire quest line. And well, that's uh, no longer the case here. Uh, with this mod, once you return the land deed to Adarius, uh, you'll come back in a few days to find that, yes indeed, there's a new set of docks here, including uh, new storage areas, uh, cranes for lifting cargo, uh, guards to uh, protect the docks here, and also a new transport NPC that can offer you travel to Alphalothi and the other, uh, you know, fishing villages of the western coast of Ardenfell. Uh, this is a really simple and a straightforward addition to the game here, 
but uh, one that really helps you, you know, add a bit of just emotion and uh, world detail to the Imperial Legion questline, which in addition to, you know, providing a useful service for getting around, also just makes for a rather scenic new addition to the game, and I'd highly recommend uh, checking this mod out. And anyway, that uh, wraps up uh, today's episode. As always, uh, download the links are down below. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.